Amazon, I think he worked in there. Tap in. Um, so Greg read uh, 1 Peter 3.15, and I'm going to focus in on one word, and, and my talk is more informative than it would be spiritual. And I'm tying this in with our upcoming uh, uh, meeting Saturday um, where we have three speakers that's going to be given an apology. Um, and if you've read the flyer and looked at the questions at the top, does God exist? Has the Bible been corrupted? Did the events in the Bible really happen? Those aren't your traditional discussions that we have Wednesday evening or Sunday morning during Jeff or Kyle's lessons. This is more of a secular philosophy that um, is contradicting Christian values. And if you look back at chapter 3, verse 15, and I'll read that again, um, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always, notice that, always, not sometimes, uh, but always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you, and we're to give a response in meekness and fear. So there's a, there's a way we're to respond to that. But what Paul is saying, or what Peter is saying here, Paul says the same thing in Colossians, uh, in essence, but we're to be ready to respond to these criticisms um, that we see today in secularism, and we all are aware of that. I think the younger you are, probably the more aware you are of that. But one word that we look at here, I think some versions have provide an answer. Uh, the King James says to provide a defense and the Greek word that's used there is apologia. And I was calling it something different, but I did talk to Jordan this morning, who, is a, who has a degree in Greek and Hebrew, and I said, how do you pronounce this word? And he set me straight on that. So apologia, uh, where we get the word apology. And when you think about our definition of an apology, like I mentioned, these three speakers Saturday is going to be given an apology. Uh, we think of being sorry for something or regretting something. But in the Bible, this word apologia is used, I think, seven or eight times. And in each instance, the Greek word, the meaning here, the sense of that is a defense or an answer. And it's kind of confusing. It took me a while. If you read and study um, many commentaries, you'll see this word apologetics, and it, it's becoming more and more popular. But the sense of an apologetic uh, presentation, or there's even fields of study in apologetics, uh, but it is a defense of the Christian faith. And that's what we'll be hearing Saturday is a defense of the Christian faith. And let me just say this. It is a youth rally. Um, so it's definitely uh, imperative that we have our young here. But let me also say that it is important if you're older. Um, a, a defense, and we look at it in these terms, of being able to kind of combat in, in, a, in a meek way um, some of these human philosophies. And we're kind of targeting that toward unbelievers, right, that maybe hold these, these isms, um, and we're familiar with some of these atheism, there's postmodernism, there's naturalism, uh, the God doesn't exist crowd. But, but something else that can happen, because we're all part of this world and we're all exposed to this, it can erode our own values and our own faith as Christians. So um, the, the speakers that we have, we'll, we'll talk to both sides of that. So if you can be here Saturday, be here. Um, so... Apology is a defense, and that's how, how Peter uses it in this, uh, in this letter that he has written to uh, really a large geographical area of Christians in what we would call modern-day Turkey that are under persecution. And, and uh, um, he is preparing them and, and 
encouraging them to be able to respond in a positive way to these accusations. And uh, apologetics is not new. If we think of it even in New Testament perspective, uh, Jesus was an apologist, if you will. His, his, his message and the apostles' message was to mostly the Jewish crowd, right, who had a foundation in God, but they had a misunderstanding of who the Messiah was. Uh, and we go to Paul in the New Testament, and he, he was given a defense, and his message was to Jews, but also to the Gentiles, who were pagans, as we call them, that did not have that, that foundation uh, in, in God and in God's way. So different tactics were used there, and we see some hints of that uh, in, in, in Corinthians uh, and Colossians as well. Uh, and the early church, uh, you know, second century A.D., I think we've probably most of us have heard the name of Justin Martyr, uh, lived around the 170s and 180s, uh, during a time of, of uh, really intense Christian persecutions. And there were lots of accusations about Christians as cannibals. That was one accusation because they partook of the Lord's Supper, something that represented his body, his flesh, and his blood. Uh, they were considered atheists because they only believed in one God, not the, the, the poly gods uh, of the Roman uh, pagan religion. Um, so Justin Martyr wrote, uh, and you can read these. These are pretty interesting reads. He wrote two letters that we have to the Roman Senate and to the emperor in defense of Christianity and why they should not be persecuted. And that's really the first uh, non-biblical apologies that, uh, uh, that we talk about in that sense. Uh, today, you know, not much has changed as far as persecution and, and accusations <laughs> to the Christian faith. But when we talk about apologetics, it's the defense of the Christian faith. And what Peter again tells us is that we are, be, are, ready, are to be ready to give that defense uh, against atheism, modernism, uh, naturalism. Um, and again, I'll just reiterate, it's just not for the young that are exposed to this through higher education uh, or entertainment, but it is something important for all of us. Um, so an unsolicited plug uh, for Saturday, if you can clear your schedule, please be here 10 to 2, and lunch is provided. Uh, and I will uh, defer the remaining half hour uh, to Randall, he has eight pages, by the way, so this, will, this should be good, Randall.